No one likes the self-deletion squad game. Wow, who would have expected? Except you, me, everyone with a brain probably. The moment I saw the first trailer, I was already convinced it's gonna be a dumpster fire. And you know what? I was right. And so were most of you probably. Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League is dead on arrival and I can't say it surprises me or anybody else because the writing was on the wall the minute they announced the game. Now with that said, I want to talk about some of the hate surrounding oh. the game. I want to talk about a little bit of the criticisms that some people have had. But more than anything, I want to talk about how we can avoid things like this in the future because if we don't, we're going to see the loss of some of our favorite franchises and a lot of people are going to be without a job. I would not say that's bad. We're not going to lose these franchises, by the way. If the studio making the game makes such a bad product that it collapses, so be it. Someone else is just going to get the license and start making the game. It's not going to be that hot. You're not going to lose the franchise, okay? And maybe it's going to be in better hands. And second of all, I don't agree with this. I want game developers to be fired. Because we are in this situation, seemingly, where there's so many game developers that don't even have a single shred of talent for the job. And they're making these lackluster, shitty excuses of games and then they're going on Twitter and crying about how hard it is to make a game and how you should feel pity for them being talentless losers. It is absolutely insane. I think the gaming industry needs a purge from these talentless hacks that have invaded the space just because, oh wow, making games is cool and fun, I want to make games. And you know, the writing was on the wall when it was clear that they don't have a single shred of talent or understanding, but they still went at it. I feel absolutely no pity for people like that get uh, getting fired. I actually endorse it. Jason Schreier over at Bloomberg writes, Last month in Los Angeles, video game journalists got to play a few hours of the upcoming Suicide Squad game from Warner Brothers. This week, they published previews, and the results weren't pretty. I left the preview feeling less optimistic than I came in, wrote IGN's Destin Ligiri. Eurogamer lamented, this might not be the superhero fantasy you were looking for. Negativity has long surrounded Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, which comes out on February 2nd, in part because the franchise is underperformed, but mostly because the game is illustrative of the type of trend chasing that has led to a lot of heartbreak over the years. Rocksteady Studios, the London-based developer behind the game, was once an industry darling thanks to- Man, just from- just from those 20 seconds of gameplay, you can just tell how bad the game is, okay? Admittedly, it's an in-game cutscene, which is kind of cool, I like that. But, man, that's a bad in-game cutscene. It looked so rigid. So, the Green Lantern uh, energy construct just randomly appears. You can't even see Green Lantern anywhere. And then they get taken on the most rigid path possible to a place and turned around, even though he teleports in. Oh, wow, that is just an amazingly awkward cutscene. Yeah, I, liking a game like this where the cutscenes are this absolutely poorly rigid is just sad. In the very, very first trailer for the game, you could actually see when they go into a tunnel and they're going down into the elevator. You could see the camera spazzing out. Man, if you can't even do something that basic, what hope does the game have? ...to its critically acclaimed Batman Arkham series, which revolutionized superhero games with innovative gameplay and original stories rather than movie tie-ins. Then the company had announced that it had pivoted from narrative single-player action games to a third-person multiplayer shooter, dismaying fans. Also, wasn't this game held back like a year or two to be fixed and made better or something like that? Man, I love it when a Hollywood franchise level thing put, does the pushback thing. Think about it, Captain Marvel literally got reshot three or four times to make the movie not absolute garbage. How did it turn out? Well, it's still absolute garbage. Wow, yeah, we, we all know how that ends. Every time they uh, decided, wait a minute, this game is bad. If we sell it now, we're gonna be a laughing stock. Like, for example, Starfield uh, got held back one year to fix bugs and was made for eight. This game got held back 
Man, what's the point? You already cooked it. Are you, wh why? Why shove it back in the oven? It's already probably burnt. And you're not gonna unburn it magically. You're gonna just burn it more, most likely. So what's the point? Usually when someone uh, pushes back a game for a year or two because the game is bad, not because it's bugs or something like that, that means that the very core of the game is trash. And, well, it always seems to be true, and... You know, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League seems to be absolutely no exception to this golden rule. I've always had this distinction between superhero video game and a game that just so happens to be about superheroes. And I feel like the latter is the one that Rocksteady Studios always leaned on because well, it felt like they made a game first that just so happened to be about Batman. And it was something that really resonated with people because they made such a great game in the first place. They ended up building this really strong audience, this really strong following. However... Now we have Warner Brothers wanting to come in and exploit all of that goodwill so that they can try to pull in all those microtransaction live service dollars because that's exactly what this situation is. It's trend chasing. Jason Schreier's absolutely right on this. And this is something that we've seen across the industry for a while now, but it's deeper than that. It's not just a surface level. Yeah, we have seen quite a few games just implement microtransactions, but I don't think this is it. A lot of people don't like the Suicide Squad. Well, there's two things why people don't like the Suicide Squad Killed Justice League that I actually think are very bad arguments why you don't like it. So, first of all, it's the fact, oh, it was by, done by the people who made Arkham Asylum and blah blah blah. It was a single player game and now they're doing this. Well, yeah, you. Every studio at some point is going to try and do different things. They're not going to be they're not going to try and do one thing forever. This is completely normal, okay? I understand that people are uh, a little bit upset because they were known for X but now they're doing Y and those things do not, you know, don't have a good transition amongst each other. But it is what it is. Studios are going to try it. So, I'm not going to fault them for that honestly too much. But second of all is, is the argument that a lot of people are making and it makes absolutely no sense in my opinion. It's the fact it's the fact that people are saying that they're not they don't like this game just because oh you're supposed to deal with the oh you, you oh you're killing Batman, Superman and all the good guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a game. And some people are saying, oh, they, they're not going to like the game just because of that. You can't you can't kill Superman and Batman and whatever. Okay, again, I'll reiterate this. I think Batman and Superman are by far the lamest comic book heroes in all of existence. They have absolutely no personality. They're boring. They're one-dimensional. They don't have complexity and depth. Batman has a ton of complexity and depth. Dude, his patterns got shot, and now he's an emo god kid for the rest of his life. What a complexity. Wow. Wow. A used water bottle has more complexity than that. So stop, stop it. And also, I'm tired of Batman. You know what's the worst part about Batman? The first time you actually uh, get to know what Batman is, you're thinking, wow, this is kind of cool. I also thought Batman was cool at a point. But there can be only so many times where uh, the good guys are down and Batman suddenly notices a bobby pin on the ground. He takes it, shoves it up his ass, and suddenly the day, was sa day is saved because that gave him quantum powers to defeat the Spectre. Okay? That's stupid. That's lame. That can only be cool and fun for so many times until it gets more the uh, completely boring. Okay? And also, we're talking about comic books, okay? Uh, the Suicide Squad can literally be powerful enough at any given time in the mo- and, and, well, any given time in any given place to literally manhandle Superman like a child. Because it's comics. The heroes- the characters are only as strong as they are uh, the, as they need to be for the story. That's why they have absolutely no consistency in power. That's why you have a Superman that gets uh, defeated by a fart in the wind. That's why you have a Superman that this that erases all of existence and kills God with a single sneeze. Well, thing where people want to be Fortnite, they want to be Call of Duty. 
they want to be all these live service games that are making all of this money. No, it actually goes beyond that. The core root of this issue is, is that who are you making these games for? It doesn't make a lot of sense to look at the audience that Rocksteady has built over this time and say, oh, well, yeah, we're going to make them a looter shooter. What? How do you know that that audience even plays those games to begin with, especially when historically... They well, but the, I don't like this argument. Like, again, the company can do whatever they want because this argument makes no sense. When they made their first game, they didn't even have an audience. You make something good, people are gonna play it. That's how simple it is, okay? They don't care about the fact that they have an audience of people who already enjoy their games. That's nice and all, but again, that doesn't mean that they can't do other things. The games that they have been purchasing from you are single player action games. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And this is something that we've seen throughout the industry Time and time again, Redfall is another example, a perfect example of this, because they're going to mirror each other, not only in their sales, but also in the downfall of the game as well. Because who was Redfall made for? Who was asking Arcane out of all studios to be making a vampire looter shooter? Actually, it's Bethesda. We know that Arcane worked completely under the guidance of Bethesda. This is not even debatable. This is... Uh, information you can find googling todd howard literally says that bethesda uh that bethesda oversaw every decision made so by the way it's a bethesda game no one asked for it but it's bad because it's bad not because no one asked for it okay it is what it is nobody even if the game turns out to be better than earlier previews suggest it won't be what many arkham fans want from rocksteady Suicide Squad is an online live service game with cosmetic microtransactions and a stream of content that will continue after the launch as Warner Brothers attempts to chase the Grand Theft Auto 5 and 4. They're gonna, they're gonna add pay to win things. I, I, I already see it in the stars. Night Dragons. These games as a service, which are monetized long after release, are so appealing to executives that... Warner Brothers Discovery Inc. CEO David Zaslav recently said all their big games would follow suit moving forward. I don't think a single person is going to play Hotly Quinn, a knockoff version of Spider-Man. Dude, man, this game is so poorly. Again, it's com it co this game completely fails at the core level. If you have seen the traversing techniques for each character, they're unique. Well, some are clearly better and more fun than the others. And Harley Quinn is a knockoff Spider-Man, okay? That alone is gonna make people not play, you know, well, at least one out of four characters. And everything else seems also kind of slightly a joke. The city looks bad. It's just a bad game. Okay? The fact that no one asked for this does not matter. No one asked for Skyrim. But, well, I, well, people asked for an Elder Scrolls game, but no one asked for Skyrim, and it was a success. There are tons of games that nobody asked for, and they're absolutely zingers, and they're amazing, and people love them. Why? Because they're good games. Suicide Squad is just blatantly a bad game. Word. We have seen so many studios close over the last few years. We've seen so many layoffs over the last couple of years, even starting into this year. And while some of that has to do with the rise of AI or just general bloat in the tech industry, it goes beyond that because what it ends up actually being is, well, <laughs> executives like David Zaslav that believe that they can just go and chase these Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto dollars. But that's not how this works. You have to already have a franchise. It this is exactly how it works. What is this? Dude, stop. It's exactly how it works. <laughs> you, you can chase after the microtransaction, whatever dollars, uh, GTA money, without any problems. That's exactly how this works. Do you think GTA gave a single fuck about people not liking shot cards? Or whatever, or GTA Online being a shit show when it's released? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Or you have to have had something that's already bringing these people in to begin with. You have to have a target audience. No, you don't. Baldur's Gate 3 had a target audience. 
Do you know how that ended? Well, the target audience multiplied by a couple of zeros. That's how it ended, okay? Target audience or no target audience, it doesn't matter. If you make something good, people will play it. It's basic marketing 101, and they don't have one. They just think... Well basic marketing does not apply to these situations. Basic marketing is marketing for the right people. Well, if we make the live service, they come. No, that's not how this works. And even if you did make a good live service game, if you're not positioning that properly for your target audience, the regular customers that gave you the money that put that studio in the place that it is today, you're still not going to. That's a stupid thing. That's a stupid thing to say. Uh, dude, it's like say, uh, it's like YouTube, okay? Yeah, it's nice that people subscribe and watch your videos, but that doesn't mean that you're their slave now, okay? That does not mean that you have to do everything anyone tells you to because they are your subscriber. It's not how life works. To succeed. Why? Because it's brand loyalty. People are loyal to the things that they are. That's just simple. People are not loyal to brands anymore. People who are still loyal to brands are stupid. Simple as that. The people that play Grand Theft Auto 5 likely are the people that played Grand Theft Auto 4, Grand Theft Auto 3. Yeah, it doesn't mean they like Rockstar. I played those games. I like those games. Guess what? I fucking hate Rockstar. What? How could this be? Let's see. Completely shattering world perspectives right here. They're probably not two. I played two. It was a over the head game. Yeah, that was good. I Makes liked me it. Feel old when I say that. But with that said, if you don't know who your target audience is and you're not positioning your products properly to make sure that they are resonating with that audience, then you're just not going to do well. And for the fact that these people are so disconnected from their audiences that they don't know their needs nor care about them and think that they're going to be able to just go and make them sweet sweet microtransaction dollars you are going to be sorely sorely surprised when you find out you can't try again you can't just make a good game it's that simple i'm i'm 100 right also you know it fire continues with i know some people are probably mad about the idea that this is correct but it is but the track record for companies that pivot to multiplayer is dismal. Recent live service flops like Anthem, Redfall, and Marvel's Avengers all came from game studios that had previously- No, they all came- they all were shit games. They- they flopped because they were shit games, not because they didn't target the right audiences. ...even beloved for their single-player titles. Nobody wants Suicide Squad to suffer the same fate. No wonder this weekend that following the previews, fans continue to repeat a rumor that won't die, that- the developers at Rocksteady had originally pitched a game about Superman, which was rejected by Warner Brothers, and the company was instead forced to make this one. In reality, Rocksteady never pitched or worked on a Superman game, according to people familiar with the company's strategy over the last decade. Following the release of Arkham Knight in 2015, the studio began working on a Batman VR game. And the, the movement is just so sad. Too bad there's this right here in front of me. The movement is just sad. So Sag. And then an unannounced multiplayer game set in the original franchise, which has not been previously reported. Another notable entry from Schreier says that the really bad news for Rocksteady is that the market is dangerously oversaturated. Even if the new Suicide Squad game overcomes low expectations and turns out to be a fantastic product, it's hard to imagine a new multiplayer live service game succeeding in an era where even stalwarts like Destiny can't seem to grow. And there's a... Destiny is currently a bad game and people hate it. Bungie is ruining it. Well, bruh, I, 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 I don't understand these conversations. They're like, oh, this is a big company. Any game they make be good. No, that's not true. D dude, come on. What, what is this bizarre world right here? Bizarre world, get it? <laughs> what, what is this stupidity? There's a lot to say here. And one of the things that I'm seeing that a lot of these studios are having an issue with is that they don't realize that there is a level of investment that comes with players that are playing live service games to begin with. If you think you're capturing a new live service audience, people that haven't played live service games before, you're wrong because most of those people that aren't playing live service games are avoiding them on purpose. That's the reason why they're playing games like the Batman Arkham series or something like that. Now with that said, 
I have heard about this. People who intentionally don't play games that are live services or whatever like that have microtransactions or stuff. That that's a super minority. Think about they that. They exist, and it's hey, if you were one of them, that's fine. You, you know, it's your choice. No, no one can say it's wrong. But they, there's not a lot of people like that. They, they, they're not a super ultra majority or something. Level of investment that's required for these players to be in games like Grand Theft Auto V, Destiny, or Fortnite. Because many of those players are probably not going to come and play your game because they're already financially and invested with their own interests in those other games. You're really unlikely to pull them across to yours with all of this busy work. Got to play every single day. Got to get that login bonus. Got to farm up these currencies and things like that. It's really difficult to get a live service game off the ground, and it's a huge gamble to do so in the first place. No, nah, it's actually super easy to get a live service game off the ground. It's, it's redonkulously easy. Just make a good game. It's even more a gamble when you're doing it with a studio that's known for products that are mostly single player. You're not appealing to that audience. Those players do not want to play this game. This isn't the game that interests them. You're aiming for an audience that you don't even. Well, if you're if you're gonna call them loyal uh, loyal loyal fans of your uh, your company, then they're gonna still buy it because they're loyal fans of your company, which is stupid. Don't be a fan of a company. Even have yet in a market that's oversaturated with people that are invested in other games. It blows my mind. How do these people even have jobs? And the worst part is, these are the same folks that, at the end of the day, if the game fails, who's going to get laid off? It ain't the, it's definitely not the executives, it's definitely... Well, the executive didn't make the all the game mechanics in the game shit, okay? They did not make the gun gameplay shit. No executive came down to the... Of uh, you know plebeian offices and said hey that's a really good gameplay system you have now make it shit no that did not happen Kathleen Kennedy was not responsible for the game development not the, uh, the the people that are on the board it's not the CEO no it's the designers yeah it's because they does they design shit this Make shitty game design failure. Oh, it's the executive's fault. It's the CEO's fault. The, the, the CEO has nothing to do with the shooting mechanics. With it being bad. Bruh, relax. I, I, hate, I hate these stupid takes. It's the developers. They'll be the ones to blame. Yeah. The studio is the one that is going to suffer the most as a result of this. And that's really sad to see, especially from a studio that has done such great work for quite a while now, but they've worked for over half a decade on a live service game that is, it's just not going to work. And so that's not new. Somebody is going to suffer the consequences of that. And it definitely isn't going to be the people in charge. I think one of the things that bothers me about this, when I read stories like this, or I see games like this come out, is that there's this fundamental misunderstanding between what the players want, what the players need, and how to be able to service them properly. The players don't know what they want. We got Diablo 3 because Diablo 3 devs actually listened to the player base. And what happened? Well, Diablo 3 happened. The worst fucking Diablo of a millennia. Okay? That's because they listened to the player base. They... They actually did what the player base wanted. But their player base was a bunch of idiots. So they ruined the game. So that you can make a profit. I realize that a lot of these companies want to get these live service games. Cool. Get your money. But do it in a way that you're actually going to be able to service an audience in the first place. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do otherwise. And by the way, this is the same kind of people that believe that RPG games are dead that turn-based RPG games are dead. However, that was obviously proven wrong. In a year in which, 2023, True. The, all the games of the year, the, the game of the year nominees, the best games, all the games that were the most purchased last year, none of them were live service. Heck, most of them didn't even have multiplayer. Well, 
you can't that you typically don't actually buy a life service game. Actually, no, you do buy a lot of life service games. Destiny, all of you know, all of the shit theater games. It's just disappointing. It really is. And it it really just comes down to the fact that you have people that are in charge that are appealing to investors, but have no idea anything about the industry itself. They're just trying to trend chase and follow everybody else. And the worst part is, is that since they're doing it now, they're starting a leg behind already. If they started developing this game in what, six, seven years ago, eight years ago, something like that. Well, if that's the case, the trends have already changed by the time that that game gets released. You're not going to be able to make the next Fortnite because Fortnite... Bro, people play Fortnite before, because Fortnite's an actual functional game that's kind of fun for a lot of people. If this game came out 10 years ago even, it would have been an absolute failure because it's just sad and bad to play. It's... It, no. It's already been out for that entire time that you were making that game in the first place. What these companies need to do is they need to start looking to the future. They need to start to predict trends rather than chase them. Because the only thing that you're going to do as a result is you're going to lose your fans. You're going to disappoint the audience that you've already captured. And you're probably going to ruin your studios at the end of the day. And this is something that we've seen across the industry. If your advice is for them to chase trends, that means that they're still going to disappoint the uh, people that are all already their fans. So how is that good advice? For quite a while now. And I've been scratching my head, thinking to myself, looking at some of the games that have come out over the last couple of years, and I'm like, who who are you making this for? Look at the Gollum game. Who was that for? Redfall. Who was that for? The King Kong game. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, but those are bad games. They're for no one because they're bad. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm done. I, 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 I can't. Bruh, bruh. Legendary drops. This was absolutely a, a, a banger of shit show. I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't agree with this take, like, in the slightest. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, this was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, and don't. You have a nice day. Bye-bye.